Okay, I think we're recording. Hi everyone, here's me twice um, on the big screen and the small screen with my Britney Spears microphone looking really cool. <laughs> uh, really, really delighted to welcome uh, Nadia and Malvika to our first online collaboration cafe, which is an idea that I've had for a couple of months and I'm really, really excited about um, being able to do it. So I am just going to pull up our HackMD. I'll um, share my screen real quick. Share my screen. And the reason I want to do this is so that I can um, just orient you to what this looks like. So this is a HackMD. If you click on the edit button, you can edit it. You can type in here. If you click on the eye, it shows you it nice and rendered as a website. This is the Zoom link, which is how Nadia and Malvika have joined me. Uh, this is the link to this same pad. It's a little bit of a sort of inception kind of thing. Um, this is a link to a description about what an online collaboration cafe is. So if you click on that link, it takes you to this markdown page and you can have a look at it. Um, this is a link that tells you what time it is in your local time zone. This is a timer that I found, which I think looks pretty cool. We'll use that later. And then the main thing that I wanted to just real quick pull up is our code of conduct. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. Um, and it just says that we value the participation of every member of our community. We want to ensure mm, the typo. Someone could fix that typo. That'd be a good fist. <laughs> ensure that every contributor has an enjoyable and fulfilling experience. Accordingly, everyone who participates in the Turing Way project is expected to show respect and courtesy to all com to other community members at all times. So that includes on this call. Um, and if you read down a little bit further, it talks a lot more. We're using a version of the Carpentries Code of Conduct. Um, it's got a little bit of exa a few examples of some expected behavior. So I'm just going to run through those real quick. To be respectful of different viewpoints and experiences, to use welcome and inclusive language. Uh, we're not going to harass people on this call. Uh, to respect the privacy and safety of others. So we're recording this call right now, but if you're thinking about joining in the future, you don't have to share your video, you don't have to share your name, you're welcome to take part even if you would prefer to remain a little bit more anonymous. Um, we're going to be considerate of others' participation and not be a bystander, so we'll sort of keep looking out for each other and for each other's safety. And, and we're going to try and be intentional in our actions and humble in our mistakes. Um, the list of unacceptable behavior is further down. I'll let folks can read that on their own. And then a little bit uh, just below that are some reporting guidelines and some of the consequences of unacceptable behavior. Uh, the last thing in the HackMD before I go back to not sharing my screen is um, there are some contributing guidelines and there's the book and there's the link to the GitHub repository. So those are some good places to start. Uh, my name is Kirsty. I am uh, the founder, lead developer of the Turing Way, um, and I am a research fellow here at the Allen Turing Institute. Uh, who on the call would like to go next in introducing themselves? <laughs> um, I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Nadia. I'm a PhD student at Imperial College London. Um, I currently work in developing automated technologies for systematic reviews and meta-analysis of animal studies um, which is a bit of a mouthful but essentially looking at how well animal studies are conducted if they're conducted with efficient rigor and how we can make improvements so that our animal study results translate better to the clinic and it's a laborious task so we need automated technologies to help us to do that I love it. That is super exciting. Uh, Malvika, do you want to say hi? Hi, I'm Malvika. I'm uh, currently a community outreach coordinator at Emble Bio IT, and I really care about open science and how people learn and use it. Therefore, I am excited to join this call. Amazing. And thank you very much. And uh, I think I said at the beginning that this is the very first one. And um, we're sort of figuring out what this all looks like. So if anyone has any feedback, um, we're very happy to hear any of that. And you can come along to our Git a channel or open an issue or get in touch um, on Twitter or there's lots of different ways of letting us know what you think. The, the timings 
for the for the collaboration cafe has us do a little bit of introduction and then set a few personal goals and then do uh, three Pomodoro sessions. So three sessions of 20 minutes where we will um, mute. We won't record this. We're not going to share 20, sec 20 minutes of silence um, on, the, on the YouTube recording, but we will set a timer for 20 minutes and work on anything that we want to work on. Uh, and then at the very end, we'll have more of like an open discussion about how things went and if there's anything that's worth talking about in a little bit more detail. So my goals are I will either work with Nadia and Malvika if that's helpful to them because that's, well, that's one of my biggest sort of goals. Um, but if they have things that they're going to work on, then I am going to go through the pull requests because there are a lot of pull requests that are open and waiting for me to have a quick review of. They've been open for a couple of months and it would be a sensible thing for the beginning of September for me to work through those. So that's some of the things that I might work on on this call. Um, Nadia, do you have any goals? Um, I need to remind and revise how to use GitHub efficiently. Um, and look back at where I left off in May. Um, so those are my two goals for today. Fab, fab. And you can you can just grab me if you want to if you have any questions about GitHub. So you you are not interrupting me in any way if you want to <laughs> talk through that. Malvika, do you have any goals? So same as Nadia, I want to go back to what I did uh, earlier this year and. Um, fix them because I looked at it and I, I just didn't know what I was writing. So I need to <laughs> remind myself what I was writing. Another is I actually wanted to go uh, through some of the uh, issues and mark them as uh, level, high level issue or low level issue. Need to come up with better name, but uh, something that I had been discussing with you. Yeah, 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 that's perfect. And then just for anyone who's watching along, the idea is that we'll have some issues that are marked very specifically as being really easy if you want to do your first, um, your first pull request or your first contribution to the project. Okay, well, in that case, I think, should we all just stay in this room? No one, we don't need to be in like a separate breakout room. Or do we want to? I don't think we need to be. So with, in Zoom, you can have these like separate breakout rooms and we can, it would be really good if we had lots of people and we wanted to chat in them, then you, you're you not disturbing others. But I think since there's just the three of us, we're probably all, and our goals are really similar. What we can probably do is just all stay in here. I'm going to set our little timer going and um, I'll ping you when it's, when it's time for a five minute little come back together. Um, and it should be, it should be okay. All right, does that feel good? Any suggestions? Yeah, that sounds good. Amazing, all right. Um, I've just realized that I'm not, I'm not really going to share my screen for the entire time, but I do want you to see my wonderful, um, my wonderful timer, so I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Here you go. Cool. It starts as nice and zen, look at that. Isn't it so beautiful? <laughs> Doing that up on the next time. <laughs> so we're just going to take it easy and also do lots of work. <laughs> okay, I, uh, the time has started. I'm going to press stop on the recording. Um, and yeah, let me know if you've got any questions. Just shout. So, Christy, today I'll be just joining for the first hour because I have another meeting. But okay, cool. I will probably continue working after. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Thanks so much. Thanks for letting me know. That's great. She said she's going to stop recording, but she can't find where. Ah, pause. Recording. I'll stop my video so that they catch all those people behind me. Oh <laughs> yes, fair enough. Uh, okay, so we're back. Um, we've done three Pomodoro sprints, which have been super, super fun, really helpful for me. Um, we lost Malvika along the way. She had a, another meeting to go to, but we 
gained Jez uh, from the British Library. Uh, Nadia's computer died. My computer died. We've had a whole big sort of dancing around. Um, but we also did a little bit of did a little bit of work. Uh, Jez, I know you you have to head off soonish, but do you have any thoughts about the collaboration cafes or anything that we can learn? Did you like it? Should we do anything differently going forwards? Um, I am guessing you're happy for me to recap things that we discussed before you started recording. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, which is that, yeah, so I kind of dive bombed into the session in the middle um, and hadn't realised that I was mid Pomodoro, but figured that out fairly quickly. Um, and I think, I think you're absolutely right, Kirsty. I think uh, kind of e establishing some norms around it being clear that people are working rather than chatting and that it's fine to join in the middle and just kind of do your own thing until a natural break comes along. And by natural break, I mean the cat timer. The cat timer. Zero, cat timer. Like the cat timer. <laughs> Yeah, I think, yeah, that just, just to recap, I think the, the other thing that I always think that we've got these sort of Pomodoros and we're supposed to be kind of focusing on the work and if people arrive halfway, then we're super, we want to welcome everyone who arrives because they've got lives and lots of other things going on. But if we always stop and welcome and have a chat, then we don't get the sort of work and we're trying to do this balance of like having a chat and also getting some work done. Um, one of the reflections that I had is I think we maybe need to have somebody, it's, it's really tough being somebody who answers questions, like I was answering Nadia's questions quite a lot and we were working together, but I'm also sort of chairing. And so mm -hmm. I don't quite know, I don't know whether we just sort of trust the community that like, someone will step in and welcome or whether we try and be a little bit more strict about if you're going to go and talk and collaborate together you should go off into a breakout room and have the main room be like silent working during the pomodoros do, you, do either of you have thoughts about that i feel like i'm like over organizing it i do i do understand where you're coming from because if we were bigger it, and people were continually coming in and out, it can be quite distracting. Yeah. But maybe to keep it simple, in the first instance, perhaps it's if you join during the Pomodoro, because they'll see the timer on the screen, then you're just silent until... Yeah. I don't know. Just to keep it really simple. Yeah. I think the... The breakout rooms are like super fun, but it's a little bit difficult for the person who's controlling the breakout rooms to also be in a breakout room, if that makes sense. So I feel like that's the sort of, that's the like complicated part that we might have to figure out. But I like, I think the norm, which is exactly what Jez did anyway, of if you join, you know, you join and you just kind of like take it easy. Um, until the break, until the cat turns up on the screen. I think that's probably, that's probably a good first instance. And then maybe if we get way too busy in future online ones, we'll cross that bridge. Mm -hmm. to it. And I, again, I may be falling prey to the overall over engineering thing, uh, but I hadn't realized breakout rooms were an option, but one, I suppose one option for uh, people joining part way through would be to sort of have have someone on designated greeter duty and for that person to pull new arrivals into a breakout room uh, and say hi um, oh i see in, you could have a we've got you could have a breakout room. room that was specific for if folks arrived halfway oh that's good yes that would, so this is, I actually kind of love this stuff. This is like, it gets confusing if there's then like other new people that arrive. So like you sort of bring someone into the breakout room then you got to go jumping back. But I think that is probably not as big a problem as yeah, just being able to say, oh, welcome. 
let me just let me just pull you real quick into this breakout room over here we'll say hi greet check in with you make sure you know that you've got something that you can work on and then and then kind of get back in into the palms whenever you when the cap timer comes up yeah i like that i think i think designated meet and greet designated sort of chair is probably really important and it's interesting that I think it's probably not good to have me be the chair because there's quite a lot of stuff that only I know the answers to because a lot of the stuff is in my head and I haven't communicated it and it isn't written down anywhere so that might be a good thing to think about but it could be something that somebody like you know who's like me who's just like <laughs> a foot soldier can essentially be the chair for the week for that particular yeah. session um as long as we have like a sort of that this is how we're going to generally run it yeah then it's easy for somebody like me to then for this for that particular session contribute that way yeah it would be an amazing contribution it'd be such a cool one and yeah 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 and it, it really the only sort of requirement i suppose is that you've been in one or two before and you've got kind of a enough confidence and to I, be able to say hi to people right like it's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and, and people a little bit <laughs> yes oh that is lovely that is really cool thank you both for brainstorming that with me that's really awesome um is do, there anything that, yeah do you find that be, being like told that that's my role um sometimes can give me the confidence that i wouldn't otherwise have <laughs> yeah you just need the little chair badge on yeah. and suddenly you're this like fabulous extrovert <laughs> like hi how's it going yeah it's magic i saw a wonderful thing on twitter that a uh, lab does of um the tiara of awesomeness and every time you submit a paper or you give a talk or something you know you do something really good you have to have a photo taken of you in the tiara of awesomeness um, <laughs> and i loved it i loved it very very much so yeah maybe we'll get like that. a chair crown that we pass around <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea <laughs> yeah. i do think there's an we interesting oh sorry carry on nadia what were you going to say I was just saying we don't celebrate enough. Yeah, more celebrations. So actually, <laughs> let's do that because this is what this little part is supposed to be about. About actually, so did either of you? I um, my celebrations were I um, reviewed and merged a pull request, and then I reviewed a pull request and I approved it. So that's for I left like one comment for Sarah to look at, and so that's why I didn't merge it in. So I have like actually <laughs> reviewed and merged a couple of pull requests which that was a big win <laughs> for me um do either of you want to celebrate anything it doesn't really even have to be from the call you can just celebrate i feel a lot more like i've remembered how to use github which is good i've merged so i'm up to date yes and i've even started reviewing like as in redoing one of my taxes i've written a a um, plan for a citizen science chapter. Ooh, I love it. Ooh. I love it. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Have yeah, that's, that's amazing. Amazing. Jez, do you want to celebrate anything? I have made a pull request. Cool. Is it ready for review? Yes, it is. Awesome. I, uh, I'll try and do that in the next couple of days. Uh, what was the pull request? What did it contain? It was to remove all of those extra bits of fluff from me. That accidentally impact. snuck on in. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, um, I didn't have time to remove the book sprint and I kind of assumed no one would merge it until they were gone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know. I think... Um, because we ran those book sprints like right when the project was ending and yeah. was sort of uh, finishing off or the not the project was ending but the like funding was ending yeah. and so we did a sort of massive <laughs> like, everything in. Ran two everything events in. got loads of people opening stuff and then was like 
by its summer. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of on me. So we just um, missed a couple of the things in trying to get in trying to get stuff merged. But that's awesome. And I do you think do you think that chapter that you worked on, um, which is credit for reproducible research, do you think it's in the right place? Probably not. Share my screen um, real quick and then folks can see what very, I'm doing. It was very insightful, your comment on what you're expecting to see there as opposed to what you actually saw there. Yeah. Because um, I feel like... Yeah, the because I feel like it, I would expect it to come probably after research data management. Yeah. But I see why it's at the beginning because it's also kind of setting a scene, right? Like it's sort of talking about reproducibility, talking about open research. You know, it could just yes. go straight. It could actually go after open research, maybe. Yeah. Does it? Does it maybe want to go sooner and some of the could, and maybe even be slimmed down a bit or just to kind of boil boil it down to the real key motivating stuff of why I do this because yeah. it feels like it's that kind of chapter and then have a chapter that is actually I mean I wonder some of that stuff's in the RDM chapter yeah yeah exactly I wonder if what do you think about it it going inside of reproducibility do you think it needs to come after open research maybe after open research Because if the chapter is on credit for reproducible research, then maybe it could go after reproducibility, like within reproducibility. Yeah. It could be a third, like a 2.3 could become, yeah. after, after definitions, it could become 2.4 could be getting credit for reproducibility. Yes. It might even be a subsection of 2.2. Yeah. So I'm slightly prone to create way too deep hierarchies. Yeah. <laughs> it is it's sort of it's a bit tempting um nadia do you have a thought about that if you were intuitively looking through and there was something about credit for reproducible research do you have a feeling about where you would look for that um yeah so i was just thinking more from a um like a salesman's point of view in that there's lots of people who still aren't necessarily engaging with these themes of open and reproducible research. And so it's kind of one of those things I think needs to be up near the top because it's sort of a hook to get people to read on um, and engage with with it because there are ways in which you will you can be credited for doing this kind of stuff you're not gonna not progress because you're doing reproducible research am i making sense like the motivating factors are very important so if it's somewhere near the top and its own chapter then perhaps that will get more people to engage do you think it should be its own chapter yeah i do okay because it's a big enough thing that you want people to see it immediately, not tucked. Yeah, not to have to go through sub sub chapters, yeah. and also because I think it is one of the big concerns that people have, or yeah. it's something that's continually being discussed: is how do you receive credit for the work that you do, and that are the are the markers in academic careers fair or correct or you know it's, it's constantly being debated yeah and so i think it's something that people are so concerned about to have it up near the front perhaps or just yeah it kind so of gives I, it a more important place i have a talk that i've given for years which is on barriers to reproducible research and i wonder if I wonder if we could make a chapter that was something about uh, I can't think of a good answer now but the, but they combine so in the credit for reproducible research we could have a section in there that acknowledges that there are barriers to reproducible research and then sort of talk about why some of those barriers aren't as big as you might think and then also include the point about getting credit 
Yeah, I think the credit for reproducible research could still be the title, but we also include include the barriers in there. Yeah, sort definitely. Of, yeah, Jez, what do you think? And then that makes it oh, sorry, a sorry, Nadi. And I think that makes it a big attractor that you don't need to then put it into a, into another factor. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm so I'm sold on your point that it's. A thing that people will be looking for, a thing that people will want to click on. So, that yeah. Uh, that, yeah. The, th the thing I was thinking is, you were saying that Nadia and Kirsty was, um, and I then realised that I'm slightly in two minds about this. <laughs> was it <laughs> uh, myth, myths of open slash reproducible research? Um, uh, tell me what you mean about that. Like, is it? Do you mean as a like a potential title? Yeah, as in, kind of. Lo lots of people think these things, but actually, they're not true, and who's why? Yeah. Um, and I I like it in the sense that it kind of says these are not these are pretty common mistakes to make. This is these are. Mm -hmm. It's not you being an idiot. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the other hand, it's not necessarily something that is that persuasive. I don't know. I don't know why that. What? Type. What? Why do you think it's not persuasive? Um, I suppose it depends whether we think people will be looking for a page that talks about myths of reproducible research. Can you, so, have you seen, an you've seen of, oh yeah, carry on, yeah, that's what exactly was what I was going to ask you, examples. Um, an exa so an example of the myth was, would be that it takes up a lot of time and work and you don't get any recognition for that time and work yeah i mean it's not wrong <laughs> <laughs> but times are changing <laughs> and you can get it's not that you get no recognition right yeah 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 um yes uh so another point another angle is to include um some myths of reproducible research um and i bust them <laughs> um yeah you can get credit it's it's also Sorry for that. Is just me watching me type. Um, it's also potentially so. One of the things that I really, really want from the book, and um, we never sort of really got to it. And I think it's one of these things that I have in my head rather than um, that we haven't I haven't sort of really communicated all that well. But one of the things that I really wanted in the book was some like personal stories. And so I also think if we think about a chapter that's going to kind of hook people in, some paragraphs on getting credit for reproducible research is good. Some myth busting around some of the barriers or at least acknowledging some of the barriers and the fact that there are different barriers and you could overcome them differently is good. But maybe also a couple of like quotes from individual people about why they do reproducible research. Maybe that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that'd be nice. I think that'd be kind of fun. And then, it, and then we're sort of bulking out this. Like it, now, it's becoming a real. Like a, sorry, I don't mean to it's imply that it's not a real chapter <laughs> now, but it's sort of fleshing it out to being. Fleshing out, yeah. Um, having get a bit more, a bit more in the, in there. Very cool. I think it would be really cool as well for those examples that there's, there is a change afoot, I suppose, and a lot more 
you know, potential employers in academia are looking at what your record for conducting reproducible science. So if we could get some people that, you know, have actually got jobs as a result of it, that would be quite yeah. nice. And heck, if you want to move out of academia, there's an increasing number of companies yeah. looking at your GitHub profile. Yeah. Right. Whether yeah. That's yeah. Right or I think that's great. I'm, I'm really excited about, I think this is a really cool, I think this is a really cool kind of, it's a really cool chapter um, with community members explaining why they I think from a skills-based perspective is a really good one. Uh, yes. And that transfer easily. So there's lots of skills that you get that make your your research easier in the short-ish term and that transfer easily, e.g. to jobs outside of academia. Awesome, that is very, very cool. Um, I, have a, I have another call that is happening at the end of this one, and I'm a tiny bit nervous <laughs> that the folks from the brain imaging data structure are going to like arrive whilst I'm still recording. <laughs> and so I think we might want to, um, draw this to a close is there anything else jez and nadia that you want to add no um just that thank you and i think that the attending more of these will definitely help me to make more contributions <laughs> amazing um, what a great quote for advertising for all of the other people <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way i'm going to do it otherwise because it's just so difficult to set time aside unless I'm face to face with someone. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Jess, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, yes, thank you. While, while you were showing Nadia how to uh, do stuff on GitHub, I finally learned how you can merge the main repository into your fork by yeah. switching the bases around. Yes. Yes. Always it's... have ended up doing that on the command line. Yeah. Yeah. Past. And it's it's sort of easier on the command line, but only if you've set it all you up. You know how to use the command, command line. line. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, that's that's great. Good. I'm really glad that was helpful. I do think yeah. that's that's a weirdly tricky. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. And to be honest that is the sort of thing so one of the things that i want to try and get more information into is the contributing on um collaborating on github and gitlab chapter because these are the sorts of like tricks not really a trick but like hidden pieces of information that should be in the turing way right mm. i should be able to just send you a little link to that section and that will and that will explain it and so yeah, those are the, but, but until now, <laughs> well, until then, I'm delighted that I was able to explain that. It's really cool. Well, I, I've, you've just both absolutely, today. I said at the beginning that I got here early, which is not my style. And so I was panicking that I was going to be entirely by myself because, you know, I was minus five minutes <laughs> from the time. Um, <laughs> And I, I'm so, so delighted that uh, Jez, Nadia and Malvika, who was here at the first part, that you were able to come along. I, f I find it really, it's really great to set the time aside. That's one of the biggest reasons for doing this. But I also find it incredibly inspiring to um, have these conversations. So thank you so much. It's my little heart. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you soon. Always a pleasure. Take yeah. care. Bye. 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 Bye.